Welcome to East Friendship Live! Come on! Let's go! East Side, where you at, baby? Come on, let's bless the Lord! Hey! We just want you to bless the Lord with us on this morning. Is that all right? Come on, let's sing it! Bless the Lord with me. I come on and bless the Lord with me. Hey, bless the Lord with me. I come on and bless the Lord with me. MOP, what you say? Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord with me. Come on, MOP. Say, bless the Lord with me. Hey, come on and bless the bless Lord. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with bless me. The Lord with come on, let's take it up. Here we go. Come on and clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Come on, y'all can sing it with us. Come on and clap. Clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands clap with me. Clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands. Clap your hands with me. Hey, clap your hands. Clap your hands with me. One more time, clap your hands. Clap your hands with me. Clap your hands clap with me. Clap your hands with me. We want to give them the praise. Clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Here we go. Shout hallelujah. Give him the highest praise. Come on. Shout hallelujah. Hey. Give him the highest praise. Let's take it up. Thousand. 
for your divine blessings on each and every person that's present today, each person that's watching, each person that's observing, each and every person that's connected to this program in any way. We ask your blessings on their family, dear Lord. 
each and every one. We declare the word of the word of Almighty God that says that Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And that is definitely declared and established. So we speak this to each and every one that's here, everyone that's watching, everyone that's observing. We pray for your divine protection, Lord God, and your divine favor in a world that's riddled with sin, sickness, pandemic, and disease. We declare your divine favor, Lord God, on each and every one. We decree and declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And Lord, in spite of the sickness and the setbacks and the pandemic and the calamities, we decree and declare that by your stripes, we're healed. There's one more reason to celebrate you, Lord. We glorify your holy, righteous, wonderful name. We thank you for being who you are. And once again, Lord, this is the day that you've given us. We will rejoice, 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 and be glad in it. In the name of the Almighty, in the name of Jesus, we pray. With unlimited thanks and gratification, dear God. Amen, amen, and amen. Good morning, East Friendship family and friends. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Let me introduce myself. I am Brother Culver Clark, and we are so glad that you are connecting with us today for another powerful worship experience. Listen, we are delighted that you have decided to worship with us today, whether you are a longtime member of our congregation, a newcomer, or a visitor, we appreciate you worshiping with Peace Friendship live on YouTube and Facebook. I am reminded today that even in this pandemic, God is doing great things. I am expecting great things from my family and yours. Yes, that's right, great things. Now keep your focus right there, and let's get ready to worship and hear a great word preached by our guest pastor, Dwight McKinney. Before we do, why don't you invite your friends and followers to join us this morning? Talk back to us. Let's see some good mornings. Thank you, Lord. Amens and hallelujahs right there in the chat box. One last thing, be active in worship today. Stand to your feet, dance like David danced, pray out loud, shout hallelujah and sing along with men of praise. Our desire is that the word will impact you so that you will come to know God find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. East Friendship, let's go to church. Praise the Lord, everybody, and let us exalt his name together. At East Friendship, we invite you to our community to get to know God, find freedom, and discover your purpose, and make a difference. Here are ways you can continue to grow with us in this season and get connected to the East Friendship get family. to the East Friendship family. October is Pastors Appreciation Month, and we want to take this time to thank our pastor, Melvin M. Maxwell, for all that he does for us in this branch of Zion. Pastor Max, thank you for visiting us in the hospital after our surgery. Thank you for the time you spent counseling us. Thank you for laying our loved ones to rest. Thank you for the many weddings you have officiated for us. Thank you for blessing our babies. Thank you for taking us to the water of baptism. Thank you for the many hours you have spent on your knees preparing to minister God's word to us. Thank you for taking my call in the midnight hour. Thank you for sitting in my son's classroom. Pastor, we have so many more thank yous, but we want to most of all thank God for sending you to us. East Friendship, what a powerful 21 days of prayer and fasting we had. Let's not stop there. Join First Lady and I as we fellowship virtually with our Metropolitan Baptist Church family at their fall revival, Pandemic Praise. So let's gather our families and join us every Tuesday in October to be blessed by four dynamic preachers, Dr. Gina Stewart, Dr. Howard John Wesley, Dr. Freddie Haynes and Dr. Marcus Crosby. It will excite and incite wonderment on your part. God is preparing to fulfill another promise. Despite your placement in the congregation, you're gonna be shifted. Don't let fear trump your faith. This October, we're taking David's lead and offering a great pandemic praise at 7 p.m 
every Tuesday night. Dr. Gina Stewart, Dr. Howard John Wesley, Dr. Freddie Haynes, and Dr. Marcus Cosby will mount our virtual pulpit for our fall revival, and you won't want to miss a single night. Make your $75 donation today to support our fall revival through any of our five giving options at metropolitanbaptist.org slash donate. Friends, get ready for Pandemic Praise, broadcasting on metropolitanbaptist.org, Facebook, and Zoom. Dr. Gina Stewart, Dr. Howard John Wesley, Dr. Freddie Haynes, and Dr. Marcus Cosby have a message of Pandemic Praise just for you. Come here, lean in real close, get close to your device. God is always at work. So magnify the Lord with me. Is there anybody here who wants to go ahead and shout? Every sifting season has a point of termination. God works like that. Come on, church, meet us there. Hey family, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's the annual campaign to increase awareness of this long-standing disease. 2021 and the COVID-19 environment has been a powerful reminder of the importance of taking care of our overall health, including breast health. According to the Center for Disease Control, each year, about 250,000 cases of breast cancer are diagnosed in women and about 2,300 men. Deaths from breast cancer has declined over time, but remains the second leading cause of cancer death among women. Some of the things we can do in the fight against breast cancer include early detection, timely screening, education, and supporting those on their own breast cancer journey. During this month, we can also raise awareness by proudly wearing a pink ribbon. October is not only a time of awareness, but also a time to celebrate the courage, strength, and testimonies of those battling this disease. And as a reminder that we are not just survivors, but as it says in Romans 8.37, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Schedule your mammogram today. Hey, church family. I want to let you in on something. Yeah, that's right. I got some good news. I was going to keep it to myself, but well, I had to share it with my kinfolk. So here it is. It's rally day. You know, small groups rally day. It's the day when all our church family and friends get to go online by using Realm or Constant Contact and sign up for the small group you want to be a part of. Hey, our theme is get in where you fit in. And remember, it's not too late to start a group of your own. The application to be a facilitator is also on Realm and Constant Contact. Listen, folks, there's lives at stake here. We're trying to stay connected to each other, to our church, and most important, to Jesus Christ. By the way, our small group's fall winter season also begins today. That's Sunday, October 24th, and it ends December 26th. So, as soon as you're done here, y'all need to jump online and sign up for the group you want to be a part of. And get in where you fit in. Bye-bye now. Now is a time where you can do your part in building your church and Christ's kingdom. Join us in giving via text to give, Giveify, Realm, or Classic Mail, so that our church can continue to make a difference in the lives of our ever-growing community. East Friendship is intentional about stewarding our resources and raising up a generation of people who want to touch the heart of God through their giving. Let us now pray and ask God's blessings over these tithes and offerings. Father, we thank you for blessing and keeping our church during this pandemic. We ask that you touch the lives of every giver, every home, and every family. There are those who don't have to give or are unemployed. We ask that you open new opportunities for them. Multiply and increase these gifts that we may do your work in the community and in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let us continue to worship. And right now, you can invite others to join us by clicking share right at the bottom of your screen. Help us spread the good news that God is still speaking and doing miracles around the world and right here at East Friendship. Right on time, I've sure been sick 
couldn't get well, but he healed my body. I can tell that it's all right now. Leave, I'm gonna make it in the house. It's gonna be. And he took me in With no temptation That you keep the faith That it is a plan Of your exchange That is so Said I think I'm gonna make it In the house It's gonna be Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, East Friendship family and friends. A special shout out to Pastor Melvin Maxwell and First Lady Maxwell. We want to thank you uh, for opening this door and allowing me to share a word of encouragement as you've been ministering on prospering in a pandemic. I believe today that I am on a God assignment, that God has given me a word that will encourage you and bless you. You are not here by accident or by circumstance or by happenstance. You are here because God ordained this moment for you. Now, there are some things that are, are taught in life and there are some things that are caught. So we're going to pray that God will give us spiritual ears and mature ears that we can not only be taught, but we can catch what God is trying uh, to tell us in, in, in these few minutes here. Um, we don't, uh, my subject today is going to be talking about you think too small. You think too small. That God doesn't want us to be thinking small. He can, he can bless a small amount of people. God can bless you with a small amount of money. But one thing God has a lot of difficulty working with is small-minded, small-thinking people. And God needs you to uh, expand that. Now, I want you to understand something. I know, I know we're living in a, um, a season of, of, of COVID pandemic. And a lot of people have downsized their dream. They have, um, you know, put limitations on what they were doing. But I'm going to uh, tell you that this is a time that we need to go big. Um, God has a plan. This did not catch him off guard. This did not catch God by surprise. And sometimes we need to stop listening to CNN and CBS and ABC News and all those other news networks that we listen to. And we need to get on our knees and, and tune in to Kingdom News. 
and we can hear what God is, is doing in the earth and, and, and as we go through this transition, what God is about to do. Because if you tune into Kingdom News, I guarantee you would be excited uh, about what's, what's about to take place. Now listen, we, we need to understand something, that we don't create abundance. Abundance is always present. Uh, we create limitations. The Bible tells us that as a, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what ends up happening is we become prisoners of our own thinking. And not only do we become prisoners of our own thinking, but the tragic part is that we, even consciously or subconsciously, we imprison other people in our thinking about them. I am really grateful that I had a father um, that really spoke a lot of powerful things into my life. And one of the things that, I, that have stuck with me down through the years, my father would always say, never give a person, another person, enough power in your life that their thoughts will determine how you should feel and think about yourself. And man, that, that has stuck with me, that has carried me through many times, that not to be trapped in somebody else's thinking. Now on last week, Pastor Maxwell masterfully ministered to you on expanding your mind, expanding your purpose, and expanding your faith. And I, I'm reminded of a preacher years ago who's gone on to be with the Lord, who's transitioned on, but he used to end his broadcast by saying, saying let me remind you that you don't have any problems. All you need is faith in God. So as we expand our faith, man, we're going to see that God can do so many, many things in our lives. Today, we're going to glean, uh, I'd like to glean three more lessons to add on to what Pastor Maxwell taught on last week. Three more lessons from Isaiah, the 54th chapter, that I hope will help you to expand so that you can prosper in this pandemic. So let's go ahead and uh, let me just go ahead and name those three things. I want one. I want you. I need you to understand your origin and your source. You need to understand your origin and your source. Two. You need to stop asking God for portions. We'll, we'll, I'm, 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 I'm excited about sharing that with you. Three. You need to know that you can't be stopped. Let's look at Isaiah, the 54th chapter, 1 through 5, and then we'll skip down a few verses and go to the end on the 17th verse. Listen to what it says from the, the Message Bible. Sing, barren woman who has never had a baby. Fill the air with song, you who have never experienced childbirth. You're ending up with far more children than all those childbearing women. God says so. Clear lots of ground for your tents. Make your tents large, spread out, and think big. I want you to just stop right there for a minute. If you're by yourself or you're with someone, look at them and say, you think too small. You need to spread out and think big. Say that again. You think too small. You need to spread out and think big. Then it continues to read. It says, use plenty of rope. Drive the tent pegs deep. You're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. You're going to take over whole nations. You're going to resettle abandoned cities. Don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. Don't hold back. You're not going to come up short. The 17th verse says, but no weapon that can hurt you has ever been forged. Any accuser who takes you to court will be dismissed as a liar. This is what God's servants can expect. I'll see to it that everything works out for the best, God's degree. Now, the, the chapter begins by telling the barren woman to start singing and to fill the air with song. A couple of points I want to make out here before I get into my three main points. You have to learn to sing while you're barren. You don't have to, you know, don't wait till you produce or wait till things are going, but you have to start singing now. Things may not have worked out the way you thought they should have worked out up until now. Some things, you know, you felt that I failed in or it didn't live up to the potential, whatever, whatever you're thinking. Don't stop singing. Start to sing while you're barren. Start to sing. You don't have to wait till the battle is over. You can shout now. Second thing, not only do you sing, but I'm going to ask you a question for you to think about. What kind of song are you singing? What kind of song are you singing? Because some of us have been singing the wrong song in the midst of our barrenness. Some of us have been whining and complaining and, and, 
and been very critical and been very judgmental and we become very cynical and the words that are coming out of our mouth do not bring life. They do not breathe life. They bring death. The scripture says the, 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 the power of life is in the power of life and death is in the power of the tongue. And some of us, the things that are coming out of our mouth is the reason that we're barren. Do you remember in 2 Samuel when David was bringing the Ark of the Covenant uh, back into the city? And he was praising God in his exuberance and his worship. He ended up um, dropping out of all of his clothes. And there he was dancing before the Lord without any clothes on. And his wife saw him. And the Bible says she became critical really in her heart. And she began to resent watching him worship. He, she was embarrassed by the way he was worshiping. Then when she confronted him face to face, she criticized him and, and, and in his worship. And the scripture says this about Micah. She remained barren right up until the time she died. Because she was critical and judgmental, she could not produce anything. A lot of us haven't produced because of the song, that the critical and judgmental song that we sing about other people. I, I know you feel like you got passed over for that promotion. I know you can't understand why the person living next door to you, they, you know, they were blessed with the car or, or somebody was blessed with the house and and you wonder, well, you know, I've been trying to serve the Lord and it doesn't look like I've been able to be blessed with those things. And, you know, you've had doubt and things like that. But you know what? This is not the season for being judgmental, cynical or critical of other people. Let people worship like they want to worship. Let people, you know, sing like do what they need to do. You need to keep your focus on, on the praise, the singing, the right song, because you know what? God, it doesn't matter what happening in anybody else's life. God is about to bless you. Blessings about to run and overtake you. Even though you've been barren for a long time, you'll not be barren. You'll not be embarrassed. You'll not come up short because God is about to open up and pour you out a blessing. Listen, sing the right song in the midst of your barrenness, okay? So now let me get to my three points. You need to understand your origin and your source. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, there was a relationship that was going on with you and God. The scripture said God knew you. God ordained you. He sanctified you. He set you apart. He attached a purpose to your life. He attached a plan. God knew that you went exactly the moment that he would send you into the earth for such a time as this with everything that's going on, but God put a solution in you. God put a, a, a purpose attached to your life. You did not come here uh, with any lack in your life. I want you to hear what I'm saying now. Because I, I know we pray these pretty prayers and these fancy prayers. You know, it, it, it sound, poetically it sounds uh, nice, but it may not be correct. Because you'll stand before the altar and you say, Oh Lord, I, I come before you as an empty picture before a full fountain. And you know, that sounds pretty, but it's just not an accurate picture of who you are. God did not send you into the earth empty. He didn't send you without purpose. He didn't, he didn't send you in here not knowing what you would need to accomplish the purposes that were attached to your life. The scriptures that he ordained you. Everything that you need to be successful in life was already in the earth. It's already in you. He sent you into the earth full. Full of purpose, full of answers, full of solutions. And your, your goal really in touching base with God is to empty yourself, to pour that you were poured out in the earth, that everything that God placed in you, you come to the maturity that you leave the earth with yourself having emptied out everything that God has placed in you. You are not an empty pitcher. You are a full pitcher, and God desires to, to, pour, to, 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 to pour you out. Another thing you need to understand that even though heaven is your origin, and I know a lot of us understand that heaven is our destination, but you got to understand that heaven is right where you are right now. Heaven is your present location. Right now, I'm in heaven. Why am I in heaven? Because I understand thy kingdom come, thy will be done, that the kingdom is in me, and everywhere that my feet trod is blessed. Everything that my hand touches, it shall prosper. It says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Listen, listen to what I'm saying. Did you hear that? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow 
follow me. If you're not going anywhere, surely goodness and mercy is just standing there. They're waiting. They're cheering you on. They're waiting for you to move so they can show up in the situation. Don't avoid the negative. Go into that situation because you are the blessing that God is pouring into that situation. And surely goodness and mercy will show up. If, if you move, they will follow. Okay, so now, because you got to understand that when you were born again, you, you know, the song says your hand looked new, my feet looked new, but trust, trust me, none of that changed. You still had the same hand, you had the same feet, you went back to the same house, you drove the same car, you had the same bills, you had the same job. None of that stuff changed when you became born again. When you became born again, what took place, you had a new revelation of what you already were. You came into an understanding of what you were already were, what God created you to be. And the trick of the enemy is trying to make you think that you're not all that God created you to be. That was the biggest lie told in the garden. Here, here was Adam and Eve in the garden, and the enemy, the Satan, comes along, sloop foot, and he says, listen, if you eat of this fruit, you'll be like God. There was a problem with that. <laughs> they were already like God. God says he created them in his image, after his likeness. They were already in the image and likeness of God. So what the enemy had to do was had to convince Eve that she wasn't what she already was so he could trick her into saying, I'll give you something that'll make you like this even though you already are. So she had to believe that she wasn't it in order to... Uh, take of that forbidden fruit. Listen, the enemy has been lying to you all your life, trying to get you to, 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 to believe something that's not true. You are already in the image and likeness of God. You are a child. You are a son and a daughter of God. And you need to rise up because the earth is waiting for you to come into an understanding of who you really are. Now, when I was, when I was, uh, and there's a difference. Let me just add this point in there. This is a freebie. Let me add this point in there. You have got to come out of the mentality that you are a child of God. Oh, wow. I know you've been saying I'm a child of God, and, and you know you are. But you've got to come to the place. There's a difference between being a child of God and being a son of God. The scripture says that the earth is groaning, what? For the sons of God, not the children of God, but the sons of God. You know, my father was a businessman. He owned several properties. He, he had several... Uh, you know, things that he did on the side. And um, one of the things as I, growing up in the house as his child, he was always telling me, you just stay in school and you study. You were, he really wouldn't let me into the business. You know, and as a, you know, let's face it, as an eight, nine-year-old child, I could not go and conduct my father's business and go to the bank and do his banking and do and, and meet, meet with his clients and, and meet with, uh, you know, negotiate his contracts because I was just a child. But as I became older and walked into the maturity of a son and got to the age and stage and maturity where my father could now release business into my hands and he would tell people, this is my son. I could conduct business on behalf of my father. I could not do it as a child, but I could do it as a mature son, conduct business on behalf of the father so that when I went into a place and conducted business, it was like my father was conducting the business because I was now a mature enough to operate in the spirit of my father. Listen here. God, God is saying it's time for us to grow up. It's time for us not to be continue to be children, but to recognize that we are to grow up and to be mature sons and daughters of God, that we can transact kingdom business on behalf of the Father. And just whatever Jesus said, these things that I have done, greater things that you will be able to do. And he said, whatever you now bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. You have the authority of the Father. You can speak to the blind. You can speak to the crippled, they got to get up and walk. You can speak to the deaf, they've got to hear. You can speak to the lame man, and he's got to get up and run. Why? Because you are now operating in the authority, the full authority as a son, not as a child, but as a son. And whatever you speak, whatever you command, whatever you uh, touch, whatever you, uh, you know, put your mind to your heart to, it has to be done. Why? Because you are operating under the authority of the father as a son, but not as a child. I declare today that you are no longer children, but you are the sons and daughters of God operating in the earth, doing kingdom business has been assigned to your life. 
You are a, a mature son. Now, you got to understand, the, 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 the things is Romans 8 and 3 and 8 and 32 says, did not God give his son? Why will he not freely give us all things? And if God is going to freely give us all things, why are you asking for portions? You need to stop asking for portions. Portions are never enough. You know what happens when you ask for portions. Look at, look at, look at what happened. Because the truth is God is insulted when we think too small. He wants us to think big and to ask big. And he said he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. God is waiting for us, as Pastor Maxwell said last week, to expand your faith where you are no longer asking for portions. But I want everything. God says he freely give us. Will he not freely give us all things? If he's willing to give us all things, why are we asking for portions? You know, listen to the story of the two prodigal sons. You know, the, you know we emphasize that the younger son, what he did, he asked for a portion. Give me a portion. Now, here he was. In a house, in his father's house, under his father's economy, that never, there was no limit to the father's economy. There, there was no lack in the father's economy, but he took a portion and disconnected himself from the economy of the father. And he went somewhere and that portion ran out. Listen, people, portions always run out because portions are never enough. You know, you you asking you asking for a portion, and when it runs out, you get asked for another portion. Your portion takes care of you for a little while, then you need another portion. Some of you are even crazy enough to ask God for a reasonable portion of health. When God is saying, "Look, man, I got new livers up in heaven. I got kidneys. I got lung. I got heart transplant. Everything that your physical body needs." God says, "I have it. I am the Lord that God that heals all manner of the sicknesses." God not only God can take God don't need the doctor to even give you a transplant because God can create a new heart, a new liver, a new kidney. God is in the business. He is waiting for us to ask, but all we ask for is portion. Listen, I'm 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 believing. God that's going to abundantly bless my life in a way that I'm not just living for myself because, you know, portions only bless me, but I'm trying to get my children blessed, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. 200 years from now, when great-great-grandchildren of mine are coming to this earth, and they will be born into wealth. And someone said, well, how did you get wealth? They're going to say, I was born into it. Why? My grandfather had faith in God. And he, he, he decided to take the limitations off and just ask God big. And now they are blessed. Portions don't last. Why? I'm asking God to let me not only be walking to my inheritance, but guess what? To live a hundred years so I can enjoy it in my old days. Listen here. People, stop, stop, stop asking God for portions. And even of the oldest son that was at home, he was outside grumbling and complaining to his father and saying to his father, well, you know, you know, um, here he is. He went away and wasted this, his portion. And now here I am. And you never killed the fatted calf for me. You never, you never uh, uh, killed the goat for me. And the father said, man, are you crazy? Let me say it in my own way. Are you crazy? Dude, all I have is yours. If all that I have, you have access to everything here. Everything that I have is in your hands. It's yours. Why would you be asking me for a kid or asking me for a goat or to kill you a fatted calf when you could have access and went out there and killed all you want and ate all you want? But here you are in a portion mentality, uh, you know, asking the father for a portion of something that he's already given you. If God has, God, you know what? Let me put it this way. God has nothing else to give you. He already gave you everything. He's just waiting for you to ask and access it, but he's already giving you everything. There's nothing else he can give you. He gave you everything, but you insist on living your life and asking for portions. I have declared today in my life that I am never again going to ask God for portions. I'm saying to you today, you need to stop asking God for portions. Don't, don't worry about how it looked to others and you look like you're arrogant or heavy or your heads are in the cloud. Let your heads be in the cloud. They need to be in the heavens. Your faith needs to be above the cloud. That's right. Ask God big. God wants you to ask him big. And you need to declare today that I will not ask God for portions. 
portions anymore. I want everything. He, 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 he said he'll freely give me all things. And guess what? I want it all because you don't want to just be blessed. You need to bless other people. A portion only blesses you. But when you walk into abundance, you're able to bless somebody else. So he, is so, so you're, he says you're going to take over nations. You're going to resettle abandoned cities. That's what Isaiah is telling us. He said, don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. Don't worry about what it looks like and if suppose it don't happen. Get out of that mentality. God is letting his people know not to be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. Don't hold back. You're not going to come up short. This is the word of the Lord to you today. Stop asking for portions and go after all that God has for you. And the last thing I want to share with you today, point number three. I've already told you now, you need to understand your origin and your source. I told you number two, you need to stop asking God for portions. Now number three, you need to know that you can't be stopped. Verse 17 says this, but no weapon that could hurt you had ever been forged. The weapon, there is no weapon that has been designed, produced, made. Hell does not have a weapon. The devil does not have a weapon. It does not exist. The weapon that can stop you from when God is ready to pour into your life, whom God bless, no man can curse. What God has for you is for you. No force has ever been made that can stop that from coming to your life. The only thing that can stop you is when you think too small. That's your enemy, small thinking. That's your enemy, not knowing who you are. That's your enemy, asking for portion. But there's not a weapon outside of you that can stop what God wants to bring into your life. And then he says this, God says, I'm going to seal it with a deal. In Isaiah, the 54th chapter, he seals like this. He said, this is what you can expect. And God says this, I'll see to it. Man, y'all ought, ought, ought to be running around. God himself is talking. He says, I'll see to it that everything, not some things, but everything, that means all, works out for the best. I'm believing God. I believe. I believe what God said. I believe. I, be, I believe what He said. I believe that God is not like man; that he, he will fall short of His promise. That what God said He will do, He can do, and He will do. I believe that God will stand by His word, and I believe just like He said it here that He'll see to it that everything works out for my best. So I'm believing God. So I'm encourage you to number one understand who you are. Two, stop asking God for abortions. And three, God got your back. What he said he'll do, you'll see to it that it works out for your best. Be blessed. I hope this word has, has blessed you, expanded your faith, encouraged you to go out and be all that you can be, be all that you were designed and, 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 and made to be when you, before you even entered your mother's womb. This is your day. This is your hour. This is your season. The grass hold, the earth is groaning and waiting for the sons of God to rise up and fulfill the assignment that's on their life. Be blessed, stay safe, stay healthy, love you much, peace and blessings to you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I know that word was for you, 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 and you. For it was definitely for me. It blessed my life. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Dwight McKinney, for that extraordinary word reminding us that we can think too small. And how could that be when we serve an immutable, infinite, transcendent God who declares in his word, let the mind, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. And we know that Christ has a mind so eternal and he wants us to download that mind into us. And so if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we want to invite you to invite Christ right now into your heart, into your life, into your mind, so he can guide you and lead you to greatness. That's what he wants to do. Pray this prayer with me right now. Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for putting me at this assigned time to hear this word. I right now, God, invite you into my heart, into my soul, into my mind. Forgive me, Lord, for my sins, for they are many. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of my sins, rose on the third day with all power in his hands. I confess it, 
I believe it with my mouth. I declare I am saved. Who in Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that wonderful prayer and you invited it, your life will never be the same. Your thinking will be elevated because God through the Holy Spirit will invade your life and your heart, mind, and soul. Wow, that's powerful. And today is that day. Let us know. Send us a personal message right here on the timeline on Facebook or YouTube, or you can give us a private message uh, the behind the scenes right there on Facebook, or you can write us at Kingdom Tracks, an email, right? Kingdom Tracks at efbchurch.org. That's Kingdom Tracks at efbchurch.org. We love to hear from you and to hear what God is doing. Our promise is to connect you with brothers and sisters of like mind who want to walk the earth in greatness, not minimizing their thinking, not minimizing their personhood, because Christ always multiply, increase, and elevate. Oh my God, there's so much God wants to do in your life. Here at East Friendship, we are determined to help you to really know God for yourself in an intimate way, to find freedom, of anything that's trying to hold you in bondage, to discover your purpose, which is powerful, because you have a distinct purpose in the earth and help you to use your purpose, to leverage it, to make a difference in the lives of people in your circle, in your family, in your community, in your city, your state, your nation, and this world. Oh, we are determined to help you. So please send us a message, connect with us. We'll connect you with brothers and sisters. And we want to walk with you in this new journey of faith. Oh, it was a wonderful time today. The men of God sang wonderfully. We're moving the church to the next level. We're looking forward to corporate worship and celebrating together on our time uh, in December. And we're looking forward to connect with you. Share this service. Share it every opportunity you can. You can go on YouTube and share it in multiple platforms. You can text it, share it on your Facebook page. But we need the sheep to help us to make sheep, to evangelize the world with us. God needs your help. Do your part. Only people who can do this is the Church of Jesus Christ, disciples of Jesus Christ. So we need you to help and do your part. We're just so grateful for all that you've been doing, for sticking with us through this pandemic. It has not been easy, but we've been here right with you. And we believe God for the greater that's coming in our life. I just want to pray a prayer of dismissal, but I want you to also take this message that Dr. Dwight McKinney preached to other people. Don't think small. You have a great mind, and with the mind of God in that mind, you'll be even greater. Father, we thank you for this day. We love you. We adore you. We want to live for you. We want to go for, up into the world to be a transforming, game-changing agent. God, we just pray, Father, that you would guide us and lead us. Keep us. Help us, O oh, Father, to bind in Christian love with our brothers and sisters and help us to continue to advance your kingdom. In the matchless, marvelous name of Jesus, we have to redeem them, the Lord. Say amen. God be with you until we meet again. Love, peace, and soul. Have a wonderful day. I pray that after hearing the word of God, you were inspired, challenged, and will never be the same. We worshiped together, we sang, we prayed, and we gave. Thank you again, East Friendship family and friends, for joining us today. As a reminder, we invite you to join us this afternoon at 3 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook. Don't forget to tell your friends and family. Again, we pray you will come to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. Please stay connected through our Between Friends newsletter, Realm, and social media. Family, continue to wear your mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. Make it a great week. And bless the Lord with me. Come on, MOP. Say, bless the Lord with me. Hey, come on and bless the bless Lord. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord bless with me. The Lord Clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Come on, y'all can sing it with us. Come on and